Hey guys, this is uh, Acquisitions with Jay and Ron. How's it going, guys? Um, so let's jump right into it, man. Uh, so this week, we're going to talk about three things that kind of go hand in hand. And that's why we want to talk with the, about them at the same time. And that's mirroring, labeling, and summarizing. Yeah, guys. So we'll start one by one. Mirroring, right? So what is mirroring? And we're not talking about the mirrors on the wall when you're in the bathroom, nothing like that. But you can use those exercises while you're mirroring. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I guess we'll start with what is mirroring? So mirroring is when you are talking to somebody and you start using a technique of repeating the last two or three words of what they say in the sentence. The last three words? Oh, no. So pretty much what I mean by that is like, let's say Ronnie, me and you. No, I'm just, like a, I'm oh, just oh, messing oh, with oh. you. I was mirroring. <laughs> I got him. There it is. <laughs> um, so yeah, basically an example of mirroring is, hey, Ronnie, you know, I'm looking to sell my house. Um, but the most important thing for me is that my family is taken care of. Your family? Yes, my family, the people I live with, my kids, you know, my son, um, anybody that kind of is in my, my inner circle. Your inner circle? Yes. So like inner circle, meaning, you know, friends, family, people that are close to me. Got it. So it's the people close to you is in your inner circle. Yes. Got it. There you go. So as you guys seen right there, uh, he just said family, right? So he mirrored an important part of the sentence that I used, which was family. And then he just said family, which made me want to open up more about what I was talking about because he was actively listening when he said that as well. Yeah. And you can, um, for practice, um, definitely use that in just everyday conversations. Most of the time, people don't mind talking about themselves. And if you just say that with a little bit of interest, um, I don't know, like if, you, if Jagger says, what do you say? Oh, man, there was a lot of traffic on my way here today. Oh, a lot of traffic? Yeah, man, it was, it was crazy. I had to go in and out. See? Yeah. So I'm giving him the opportunity to express himself more, right? Who doesn't want to, who, most people want to talk about themselves and about the situation or just about anything that has to do with them a lot. So just give him the opportunity, right? And a, and a very easy way to do that is by using mirroring. And I highly, highly recommend you do it with just all the people in your life. Just practice it for one day. Yeah, one other thing about mirroring, it just helps keep the conversation alive. And when you start using those techniques, it'll have the other person keep talking, which then now, bring it back to sales, you can find out more details from the conversation when the other person's talking. And when the other person's talking, most people like talking and talking about themselves, which will make it a good rapport throughout the conversation. And it also shows you're listening to the important things. When Ronnie's like, Jagger, family's important. Yes, family's very important because of XYZ. He stated the mirroring part of it, which was I talked about my family. So he knew that was going to be important yeah. throughout the conversation. Yeah, man. And you can also write like almost pick and choose what you want the person to talk about more. Um, for the what do, you, what, do you, what do you mean by that? Like pick and choose? Yeah, yeah. So for the very like extroverted people that you're talking to um, or the people that like just to talk a lot, um, let's say, I don't know, someone's talk, talking about their cat and how they lost their job. And I don't know. And that's it, right? I'm going to mirror the losing um, their job part, right? So, hey, yeah, you know, I'm stressed because my, you know, my cat and, you know, I, I lost my job. You lost your job? Boom. Right? So now I'm not going to go on a rant about your cat. Now, I'm not saying your cat isn't important. Right? If people like cats, I don't, you know, that's fine. But this might not be the right conversation to talk about cats. It might be the right conversation to talk about how I potentially lost my job, right? So Jagger's gonna mirror, mirror that particular part of the conversation. Yeah, and do you guys see how we're thinking on our feet while you're doing this? This comes with practice, so you're gonna make a lot of mistakes when you're starting it out, but the best part is you can do this in your everyday life where there's no risk involved. When you're talking to your wife, your husband, your aunt, your uncle, anybody you're dealing with, you could start mirroring and having them talk about themselves and start you know, actually listening more and then when you mirror, have them keep talking. It's just going to help you get better for when you're in those important situations and you want to actually get more out of the conversation because you need those details. And it helps a lot when people are maybe a little bit reluctant to give you information. You find something they like talking about, you start mirroring it and then they'll keep going. Yep. Then you create a little bond from there. Yeah, definitely. And um, I guess we wanted to mention uh, mirror, mirroring and labeling together because it's, they almost go hand in hand. And um, just to jump into labeling, um, labeling is when you make a statement about what you just heard or what you got from whatever Jagger said or that person you're speaking to. So let's say Jagger says a whole bunch of things. Let's talk about your house. Oh, man, my house is 
it's a huge house. It's three floors. Um, I love it. I've been living there for a really long time. I actually um, bought this back when my son was born. So, uh, you know, it is a, a big part of my life. Got it. Okay. So what I'm hearing from you is that this house that doesn't seem like you want to sell means a lot to you because this is where your family was raised and it's big enough for you to keep having family come in and see you. Yeah, yeah, it is big, but honestly, I might be looking to downsize a little bit. I wouldn't say I'm not open to it. Yeah, and what I did there, right, I, I made a statement, right? I labeled his situation, and now two things are going to happen. Either Jagger in this situation is going to correct me or agree with me, right? But I'm putting the, this person in a position where they have to choose one or the other. Yeah, another great example of that is, say, Ronnie, you know, not sales related ronnie's outside washing his car he has this beautiful red car and uh we start talking about it be like hey man is that is that your car you know and then you start talking about it yeah. and then pretty much be like wow it seems like you really love that car boom so now from there the conversation is going to go with no actually i i don't really love it my wife made me get it i i really just uh you know needed this this car or your wife yeah, yeah my wife she's uh you know always going on trips with me you know she wanted to make sure we had this this, this kind of car she loves the color red blah 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 why, why, why do you ask right so what that does right is now you how you just i create i started with the label and this is why it's hard to gauge right like when to use and when not to use it these are just tools right so we um, we started off labeling and then he mentioned his wife so i was like ah oh, you know let me let me dig into that i don't have to be like hey let me dig into your you know let me dig in tell me about your wife no there's no need just your wife yeah so that's another example of mirroring right then and there yep. so that's why labeling mirroring go hand in hand because you probably use it in your everyday conversations and you don't even realize yep. another big part of labeling is right like ronnie said you're making a statement so the whole point of labeling is you just want to put a statement out there and either they're going to agree or disagree with that statement and it's from what they said so ronnie um i guess we'll, let, let, let's role play one more time with yeah. it. Yeah. You want me to be the seller, I guess? Yeah. Hey, um, yeah, I want to sell my house. Um, you know, it's me and my wife and my son. We currently live there. Um, I'll be honest, the house is not in the best shape. You know, um, my son is getting ready to go to school, go to college, and you know, I don't, this is too much, too much house for me and my wife. We're getting older, you, you know what I'm saying? Okay, no, I get you. So pretty much like the house, you know, your, your family's getting bigger, it's growing, your son's moving out. So it seems like you guys really just uh, are ready to move forward and, and not live at this property anymore because you want to downsize a little bit? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely looking to downsize. Um, like I said, my son's leaving, right? It's just me and my wife, like why do we need a house this size? Plus, you know, we don't we don't really have the money to like, you know, we don't even know if we want to put money into this house for what, right? Like, uh, I don't know if people are going to come visit yeah. me. It seems like you really don't want to waste your time putting money into the house right now. Uh, no, no, definitely not looking to um, to put money, more money into this house. I understand it needs work and, you know, I just kind of, I'm ready to move on. So guys, you see right there, just from me making that statement, it seems like you're whatever your statement is it, it, just from that he kept talking and he kept giving me reasons on why he doesn't want to keep the house then now from there I could have mirrored and been like oh tell me more about the house really that the house what well, sounds like a really great house you know like your, your kids live there then boom the conversation keeps going so that's why mirroring and labeling really go hand in hand because when you make a statement about something they're either gonna correct you or not and then you can mirror off of that statement and actually get them to keep talking about it until you get what you feel like you need out of the conversation exactly right so i always look at it like my north star right is whatever I, I i want this conversation to end at right so let's say i'm talking to a potential seller right my ultimate goal is to get closer right to landing that deal right so i'm using all these tools to work my way there right so if i want to label i want to mirror right? i want to mirror things that have to do with me getting closer to that north star Right. If I'm labeling right, I'm making these statements. Right. So is, is this so it seems like right. These are things that like, OK, it seems like this. OK, so there is, you know, I can help him or her get to this point, which will then help me get to this North Star. So think of it like that. Right. There's no there's we can't give you, a, I guess, a, a specific time frame or when to use or how many times to use it. Think of it like this is going to get me closer to my ultimate goal when I made this call or when I met, you know, met that person at that appointment. Yeah, great point. Uh, another way I like to look at it is you have a tool belt on, right? Mm -hmm. So that tool belt is gonna have different tools inside. And when you're going to, let's just say, break down a wall, 
you might need a screwdriver, you might need a hammer, you might need, you know, another type of tool. That's all the tools you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the tool guy. But my, my point is, though, you just need to know when to pull out that tool. So with talking to sellers or talking to people in general, if someone is giving you everything you need and they're talking a lot, maybe mirroring isn't needed as much because the conversation's flowing well enough. Maybe it's just labeling so you can make sure you understand the situation and it helps you ask without asking like a dangerous question that might offend somebody, you can just make a statement and they'll correct you or not. And then it doesn't kill the rapport of the conversation, but more importantly, it helps you uncover more details throughout the conversation. Yeah, um, a very good example of how like labeling slash making a statement, whatever you wanna call it, is super effective. Um, and for those who are in acquisitions um, for real estate, sometimes you know it's important for us to have a feel for the equity, right? Um, and a great question is, that I strongly recommend is something very easy. Hey, Jagger, how, how long have you owned this house for? Like 35 years. It's Thir been my family forever. Oh, man, 35 years? Yeah, 35 years. It's been, you know, uh, my mom's house. I inherited it, um, you know, and I'm just looking to finally sell. Wow, so you don't even have a mortgage on this property. No, actually, I don't. My, it's been in my family for so long. They actually got it paid off a while ago. Boom. So I'm going to mirror what he said just to see if, there's, if I'm missing anything. And then I'm going to make a statement. And I'm going to let Jagger either correct it or just go with it. Now, most of the time, if they don't say anything and they just keep the conversation going, that means you're right most of the time. Like 95% of the time, that means you're right. Um, if, they don't, if they don't feel comfortable disclosing, that's okay too, right? But... This, I feel like, gives you gives us, I feel like we both use it, and it gives us, I would say, well, like 98% of the time yeah. that gets us what we need. Yeah, and it goes for that, and it goes for a thousand other things, yes. guys. Anytime you make a statement, instead of asking that question, you have a better opportunity of them not getting upset at you when you ask it. Because a lot of these questions can be personal, and it also just shows you're listening. Let me get this straight. This is why you want to do this, right? No, not at all. You're 100% wrong. X, Y, Z. Ah, oh, there it is. Now I found it. Now I can go back to my North Star of getting to the deal. So now it just seems like this is what you're doing. And then boom, when you just start using those sentences, it seems like, it sounds like, is this what it is? You're making a statement for them to correct you or not. And then you can move forward however you proceed with mirroring, more questions, whatever it is. But that is the moral of the story. You need to be able to do this because it'll help keep the conversations flowing way better. Yeah. Yeah. And um, the last thing we can touch on is a summarizing. So, Jagger, you brought up an example of like sometimes you don't need mirroring and labeling because the people are just talking, talking, talking. So, look at this guy actively listening from like 30 seconds ago. Ah, stop it. <laughs> um, so, for those people, this is when summarizing is fantastic. Um, sometimes we'll go, we'll have those people that are just like giving us just, just word vomit, right? Just, it's all effective things that we need, right? All important information, but sometimes it's a lot. So uh, summarizing is a great tool. So just start ranting. Oh man, you know, I've owned the house for 30 years. I uh, inherited it. You know, me and my wife are looking to move to Ohio. You know, uh, I got a new job there and uh, I'm ready to sell. Jagger, I'm, I'm so sorry to cut you off, but I want to make sure that I got everything you've given me so far. Is that okay? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so what I'm hearing from you is that you and your wife are considering the move to Ohio You've owned the house for whatever amount of time he said, and blah, blah, blah. Did, did I get everything? Yeah, yeah, that's actually pretty much it. Okay, so what I'm doing there, right, sometimes we get a lot of information, and just one statement, like, uh, or labeling is not enough, because you got a lot of information. Literally, not only are you showcasing, am I showcasing to Jagger that I'm actively listening because I can repeat everything that he just told me in my own words, but it also allows you to slow down. And to, for you to make sure that you didn't miss anything and for you to make sure that, you know, that you're going at a, at a pace where you can consume everything. I know a lot of people get scared of like, oh, wait, I didn't catch what you said. So what I like to do is that I'll just create a summary. Three sentences for the most part tend to cover it. But after those three sentences, then you ask, hey, did I get everything? Yeah, and a big part of how you start that is, hey, let me just make sure I understand the full picture. 
hey, let me just take a second to make sure I, I understand exactly what's going on. So you see how you're saying it like this? It's we're on the same team. I'm not trying to tell you you're not explaining it to me well, I don't get it, cutting him off. I'm just like, hey, I wanna make sure you're on the same page, so let me make sure I got this straight. You're looking to sell, you're looking to do this, this is why, and this is how, and this is when. All of that, what we just spoke about, it. is that right? Now if I miss something, no, no, you, you, you missed this. I, I need to sell in three months, or I need to do this tomorrow. Tomorrow. Gotcha, tomorrow, why? And then, and then now you start labeling and mirroring to get more details out of that. And then now the conversation is just flowing better. Yep. And it flows so good. And then now after you summarize, right? So now you have everything you need. They feel like you're actually listening to them because you can repeat what they said in your version. They're going to tell you exactly that. Or they're going to correct you and tell you what else you missed, which then now helps you because now you have that information going forward. Yeah. And then now it's the North Star, right? Getting to your goal. Whatever that is, you summarize it, recap it, and move forward. It goes back to the mirroring and labeling. Once you're labeling in the conversation and mirroring it, then you could summarize that. So, Ronnie, it seems like you um, want to sell the property in the next few months? Yeah. Okay. So, it seems like you want to sell in the next few months. You're not in a hurry and you need top dollar. Yeah. Okay. So, all of that being said, you know, the next steps is blah, blah, blah. So, you just got to really understand that once you label and mirror, at any time you feel like you just need to make sure you and the other person are on the same page, summarize it all up and then be like, hey, I have a few more questions or thank you so much for your time and move on with whatever else you kind of have to do. Yep. Yeah, I mean, you said it perfectly. And um, something we spoke about in one of our videos was um, pushing and pulling. And naturally, once you start using mirroring, labeling, and summarizing, you're talking about the next steps. That's when pushing and pulling work perfectly. We're not going to dig too much into pushing and pulling. Um, you can definitely watch our video. We'll, we'll link it on the bottom. But um, it all works hand in hand. And once again, Jagger used a great example with the tool belt, right? It's, okay, I got to use this. Okay, now I got to use this. Okay, now I got to use this, right? They all they all kind of play off of each other, right? Yeah, it's a great point. And um, so, guys, pretty much today, you know, I hope you guys got a few good takeaways from it. Um, a big part of what we spoke about was mirroring, labeling, and then summarizing the conversation, right? So mirroring is just whatever they say. You're speaking about your family member, right? Just repeating something they said to get them talking more. Labeling, making a statement, having them correct it or not. It seems like this. It seems like that. Mm -hmm. And then summarizing is just recapping that conversation. Correct. Yeah. And um, guys, just in case you guys want to dig a little deeper into it, um, I'm I'm sure a lot of people have heard of this book, but Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss is a fantastic book, and he has a uh, full chapters on mirroring, on labeling, and on summarizing. So definitely, if you're in the acquisitions world, I 100% um, vouch for this book. Yeah, great book, guys, and uh, hope you enjoyed another episode of Jay and Ron Acquisitions. Uh, we're out. Yeah.